This is Matt Benalil with 15rounds.com and I'm sitting here with Erin Towhill in preparation for BYB Extreme. How are you doing today, Erin? I'm great. Thank you for having me. We are looking forward to seeing you return to the ring. You have a long background in combat sports in general. Tell us, how did you get started? Um, how did I get started? I'll try to make a long story very short. So, grew up playing sports soccer, um, basketball, everything. And then when I was like 17 or 18, I found kickboxing and it really only started doing, it was like cardio kickboxing. That was the big thing back then. I'm 44, so this is a long time ago. And then it just really evolved into that. I started doing jujitsu, um, boxing, some judo. And a little bit later, my coach was like, hey, you want to fight? And I said, let's do it. What's your favorite? What's your favorite combat sport? Oh God, I really love boxing. Obviously, um, I love I love judo and I love jujitsu too. I really like the gi. I do a lot of gi jujitsu. So, how do you think this bare knuckle is going to compare to regular boxing? Actually, this is a lot more advantageous for MMA fighters because the rules are very different. You can do a lot of dirtier stuff. Like when you're in pro boxing, you can't you know do this keep the hand in the face you can't grab behind do rabbit punches do no not the back of the head but grabbing and doing things like that you can't clinch you can't throw them around in this you can so for somebody who's has a lot of experience in both sports it's pretty cool so it's a nice opportunity to kind of put both things together so and what do you know about your opponent her background um you know, I've seen most of her fights in, um, she did some in Bellator, she did LFA and whatever. Um, I think she's did one boxing fight and I don't know. You're not too worried. I'm not, wor look, I don't want to say I'm not worried. I don't worry particularly about her, like every fight is dangerous. And I've had, this will be my 30th pro fight. I've fought the best fucking fighters in MMA and boxing around the world. So I know... A fight can change like that. It just takes one punch. So I'm very cautious. I'm very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I don't take anyone lightly, and I hope they don't take me lightly. I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go out there and implement my plan. So Let's talk about some of those big names. So you fought, let's start with Layla Ali. What was, what was it like to fight Layla Ali? Um, shit, we fought for the second win. The WBC title, which is the big green belt, which everybody knows about, it was only for men. It was only for men. So up until I think it was beginning of 2005, um, I cannot remember, Jackie Nava, who's a multiple world champion, great boxer from Mexico. She fought for the first WBC belt when they let women fight for it. And then Layla and I fought for the second one for the super middle. We did two world titles, the WBC, and I think it was... Um, the IBA as well. So a big thing being involved in, you know, Mike Tyson was the main event. We were the co-main event, a Showtime card, 18,000 people. Um, at the time, I probably was more, you know, uh, I realized later how big it was. You know, what at that it, time, it was huge, right, for women's boxing? Women's boxing was way bigger back then. In the early 2000s, mid-2000s, like you look back, the fighters were better. There's some good fighters now, of course, but the the pool and the competition is really thin. It's just how it is. Everybody wants to do MMA. They're getting paid better. They're getting better exposure. They're being treated better. The women are treated better in MMA. Um, boxing is very old school. And I know, I've been at the top in both sports, and the, it's, it's a man's sport. You know, I like how you said the, uh, the, 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 let's just say the skill was better back then. I actually saw a meme on, on Instagram talking about all of the Instagram coaches, the boxing coaches are there, the boxing advice is there, but the boxing skill is not there. And they weren't, they were talking about men uh, and, and women. What do you think about that? And I always discuss that too, because right now it's like we're in the age of social media. Everything is stream live. Everything is on the tip of your fingers. I get that. That's the evolution of of technology in the world but back then you know in the early, late 90s early 2000s whatever it was like if you wanted to 
talk shit to somebody, it was like you had to send something through AOL and then they would post it on a form and then they would do an interview and then a few days later your opponent would respond back to you. It was like, it was very, you know, not everything wasn't like that. So if you were fighting back then, there wasn't all of, uh, uh, you know, the movies and the modeling and the sponsorships and I mean, there was, but there wasn't. It's not on the level that it is now. And if you were a woman or a man that didn't have a big promoter or somebody pushing you, like Ali or something, you had to fucking dig your way from the bottom, fight the best, work your way up the ladder, and you did it because you fucking loved to fight. Right. So do you have anything to say for to some of these female boxers on the scene right now that are uh, not even ranked number one or two that are fighting for belts, and they're getting belts? Well, I mean, I understand that. It's like when the when the pool is small and there's not a lot of people, they're going to, they have to do that. They have to create fights. They have to cross promote top rank. They do this. PBC just put their first woman in there. Al Heyman swore he'd never have a woman fight for PEC and it's Sebastian Fandora's, who's a badass. He's a junior middle, 18 and 0 now. His sister who was a multiple national champion. It's going to take some time. I think MMA and this bare knuckle thing is pretty amazing too because it's like a combination I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit but it's a combination of both sports and they're putting a lot of amazing people into this and production and money and they're treating all of us equally boxing still has to catch up to that MMA loves both but um, man if you're in this for money you're in the wrong business you gotta do it because you love it and if you don't have a promoter, like any young lady who's going to watch this or, or they want to fight, do it the right way. You got to train hard. You got to work your way up the ladder and you got to win. Nice. Nice. Good words. Good words of advice. Um, any last words before your fight tomorrow night? What can the fans expect from you? The fans can expect a lot of violence. If you've seen any of my fights, win, lose, or draw, I fucking fight. So I'm not worried about what she's doing. I have to worry about me, focus on me, keep my energy on me, and um, may the best woman win. And she didn't even look at you at the at this at this. Do you think she didn't hear that? Was it noisy up there? Did she not hear fighters face each other? Or well, I know that's a rhetorical question, but she knows. And I met her yesterday. You know, we. I don't mind some good shit talking. I don't mind a little bit of that. If, if you're going to fucking take it to a certain level, keep that fucking same energy when you see me. And that's what I told her. And when I saw her at the gym and at the lobby, she didn't have that same shit to say to me. But when there's cameras around and fucking bravado around, people will act a certain way. But that's not who you are. If, unless you're doing that 24-7 when the cameras are off. All right. I know I've been in this game 25 fucking years. I've seen it all. I've traveled around the world. I've seen it all. So I know. I know. I know. Well, I know the fans are really looking forward to seeing, uh, to seeing your performance tomorrow. The experience that you bring to the, to the ring is, I think, probably, probably a more experience than any, anyone else in the room, to be honest. Yeah, yeah it's very uh, possible. I mean, I, this will be my 30th pro fight. So. And yeah. I've been at the top for both sports, so I'm really excited. And, and um, just, you know, the women always come to fight. You, I just also want to show that you can still be a badass, but you can be beautiful, you can speak eloquently, you can, all those things. You know, I'm still a woman. I just, I enjoy fighting, and it's a passion of mine, so. I agree with that, and there's a lot of times that the women steal the show, especially in, especially in MMA, the UFC, um, and in... Athletes in UFC, Bellator, like, MMA is just... We see it on the local scene here, too. There's a lot of, a lot of great female fighters. Why do female fight? Why do they fight so hard? Well, because we have to prove ourselves, and that's fine. That's very normal. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people who don't think women should fight. That's okay. I was hearing that 25 years ago when guys were beating me up so badly. There wasn't cameras. There wasn't all the sexual harassment stuff. They'd try to knock me out to make me stay out of the gym. They don't do that now. It's a little different. So, but yeah, we got a little more to prove. We have to show that we can do the same thing. We just bring a different element. I'm not a man. I don't want to be a fucking man. 
I enjoy doing the technique of the sports. I'm a woman. We bring a different energy, a different element. We bring a, a different beauty to the sport. And I hope people can see that. I absolutely agree, and I really look forward to seeing you uh, perform tomorrow night, and I know the fans do also. Any last words, Aaron? Um, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Aaron.Tohill, E-R-I-N dot T-O-U-G-H-I-L-L. -L. Thank you very much. See you at the fights.